being the mixed girl when it comes to school and athletes, everyone's always asking me what's my race and what am I mixed with or like why does my hair look like that um, and having to explain that is tiring. It does get repetitive, it's like a script at that point. Around middle school is when I decided to not really go down the same path of me telling my true race. I started saying that I was mixed with white and black instead of Native American and black. It was a bit hard because I had to deal with the stereotypes. When I got to Maryland, I didn't have to choose my race. I finally found people that understood me. I found people that also didn't sound a certain way or didn't dress a certain way, but went to predominantly black schools and were participating in predominantly white areas. Because I did choose Maryland and the education and the volleyball team that had me become myself and embrace who I am as a person, it gave me the opportunity to fight for what I believe in. And all of that kind of tied in together and helped me, you know, take on the next step. What led me to fighting for my rights with my dad, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, they are our new generation's inspiration. My dad, he was telling me about his story. He said the exact same thing happened. There was a killing of a black man from police brutality and there was no leader. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, they're all, they're all gone and there's no one left to lead. There's fear and which is very understandable, but that fear goes away when you find that there's support behind you. I guess I want people to hear about my message that it's not just Black Lives Matter, it's about human rights in general. It's about making sure that mental health is important and people who we are as human beings. Those uncomfortable conversations are necessary. It is weird, it is different, but you know, having those uncomfortable conversations can spread to other people and raise awareness. Raynell has really owned her wish and her want to be an activist. As a coach, it's been amazing to watch her grow into the person that she wants to become. I know that she feels like she's just getting started and there's a lot more left for her to do. The WNBA, they were fighting for their rights. The NBA, they knelt and I was like, this is my time. This is, you know, the door open that I want to take care of. The beginning of kneeling during the anthem actually wasn't as supportive as what I thought it would be. It was actually a split tie vote of if we were going to kneel during the anthem or not. At Ohio State, we had the Big Ten statement about equal rights. We had one person that voted yes to make us all kneel during the statement. But I did want to make it clear to the team that you do not have to kneel during the anthem. It is your personal choice. I remember when she started kneeling, we had some conversations. She was open and honest about what she wanted to do, what she wanted to accomplish, and it encouraged me to want to do the same thing. So I knelt beside her that game, and I have since then. It's just awesome to like follow her lead and learn from her. One moment that really stuck out with me is Layla Ricks, another one of our players, took a knee immediately. She doesn't normally do that, but she wanted to support her teammate as a coach. That's a powerful moment. When I did kneel, it was very nerve-wracking. I was scared. I didn't know how the fans were going to react. I felt like this will be my chance to really make a statement, start off small. As a coach, I think I learned a lot as well. I think that brought the locker room a lot closer than it maybe had been in the past. Selma was inspiring. Oh my gosh. I've never felt a feeling when I drove over the bridge. It was pure silence. We all were talking about this weird feeling that we, I guess, felt what the activists felt when they were walking. Like my heart sank. Like I felt like this 
like wind of just like history basically. It was pretty cool. It was scary because when you have a feeling like that, you don't know what to do with it. I was angry. History is repeating itself and you know, why are we still stuck in the same thing as 40 years ago? She's still fired up. She's still asking her teammates to keep asking questions and just open the dialogue. I think that's the number one thing that Raynell has always wanted is just, you don't always have to agree with her, but you know, can you be open? Can you have a conversation? For me personally, having those conversations with her before really helped inspire me to want to make a change. If that's having that impact on me, I can't even imagine all the little girls watching her play, all the fans getting to see it happen live, and just her impact is just reaching so many different people. As a student athlete with a platform and with society, just watching me 24-7, inspiring the young volleyball players is my goal right now. Every single game, whenever I see one little girl wearing the I Know With Raynell t-shirt, I'm like, that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. What she can accomplish, what she has confidence to do now, I think is a great launching point for her. I don't know where it goes, but it's someone that I'll be very, very proud for a very long time.